NCA day one, um, we had a really good performance. Um, you know, we got three quarters of the routine with no mistakes. I was like, wow, they're, they're hitting. They're hitting in the arena. This is actually happening right now. I was having like an out of body experience. I was so excited for them. We get to day two and something happened. They started off really, really strong. Malia's double up, it, it just spun off center. Like her foot was underneath her and she fought hard to stay on top of it. And, and then Maddox's take one and a half, I, I don't know. I just don't know. It just, I was watching Malia come down and from the corner of my eye, number two comes down. We were excited to see how we matched up on the score sheet and we didn't do good, so we didn't get to see, you know? It was kind of for nothing. We ended up in third place with two falls to the floor. So that already tells me that our routine is good enough. The routine was great. For those seven seconds of those two sets coming down, you know, it unfortunately, it, it cost us. This is not a good month for me at all. This is the worst month <laughs> that has been for a while. Just, um, I got in a car accident. Oh yeah, this is not a good month. It just, bad stuff just keeps adding up. Hopefully it gets better though. Regression to the mean. You know, over NCA weekend, we did have uh, some issues. Um, you know, I set rules for our kids, making sure that they're just doing what they're supposed to do, being where they're supposed to be, and being responsible. And some kids just don't have the discipline and don't have the self-discipline and aren't accountable. So I'm making roster changes. Sorry. Good. I came to the gym yesterday, me and Eddie had a conversation, and he was like, I need to make you an alternate because of some decisions you've made, and attitude-wise, and they're just not very good. He said that he likes the person I am on the floor, but outside of cheer is just not really the same person. On Smoed, it's always been, you know, getting our roster right. You know, not every kid is a good fit for every team. And a lot of the times it has nothing to do with cheerleading. Attitude is everything, you know? And you can be a motivator, a positive person on the floor, but if you walk off the floor and start talking negatively about your teammates when you think no one's watching, that's really who you are. And those are the things that tear a team apart. It was after we got off the floor and I was so angry that my stunt had fallen and I just like out, like out came everything. Like I was so upset with myself because like I didn't get to compete at NCA last year, so like this was my last NCA, so I really wanted to be like good, and I think I took that out with like my mouth, and my my teammates overheard me, which wasn't fair to them. They shouldn't be hearing like me like bashing one of my other teammates. So I'm currently an alternate, and yesterday I walked out because like it was hard for me just to like be there, because like there's been so much going on in my life, and like just adding that it just like wasn't like fun for me necessarily and like I was like bawling my eyes out so I like I didn't really know what to do because I didn't want my team to see me like that and like make a bigger like deal about it than it needed to be but it wasn't right of me to walk on my team. You know, I've been a negative person like in this team I've been like like I've been two different people on and off before and I just wanted to like apologize for being a total ass <laughs> and sometimes all I know that they don't hate me I think they're just disappointed. Not like, cause I love them all. Like love them all so much. Like I've given up so much for them and I know they've given up so much for me. So it's hard not to like love them. I would rather take a girl with no tumbling than have the girl with the double full that causes issues on the team that again speaks negatively about people or poorly about people, their teammates right after they walk off the floor. You know, whether it's in a public forum or just to another teammate, it, it starts breaking down the team from within. Um, I decided to take Timmy off. Um, I put Jaden Whiteman back in. I do put a lot into this routine. I've given up college, full ride scholarships, I've given up drive, I drive two and a half hours, like I've given up a lot for this team, but just because I've given up a lot doesn't mean like I've earned the spot to be here, like I have to earn the spot like in the gym and like outside the gym, like my actions and like what I say about people, I have to learn to like 
just not say it, like if I don't have anything nice to say, like as you were told when you are little, don't say it at all, so. And let's play for bear crawls now because we're wasting time in 10, nine, you're doing baskets and pyramid. And all the way to the end of the pyramid, down in five, four, three. So we want to play today. Oh, okay. You're not down. And. He said, I'm definitely out for UCA. Um, I don't know what, what the future holds. Hopefully I get put back on the floor. But yeah, it's kind of hard just to not do routines. And like when they like say line up something, I just like kind of don't know what to do with myself. I'm just like, oh, let's just go do something over here. I don't know what to do. I did like see some things about my teammates that weren't fair. So I understand why he made the decision he like did. So I respect it. I respect him. I love him. I love the team. And I hope they really do good at UCA this weekend. Um, I'll be there, so I'll be their number one fan. I always have been, so. I'm McKenna, I'm 14 years old. I've been cheering for, I wanna say it's my 10th year, and it's my eighth year at the California All-Stars. <laughs> so I was on SMOED the 2017-2018 season, and then the 2018-2019 season. And I didn't come back this year. I did high school cheer, high school stunt, went back to real school because I was homeschooled for a year before. But I went to Palm Springs just to watch and Orby was like, do you miss it? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, okay, be at TNT's practice after NCA. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and so I'm here. <laughs> Can you guys get in your stunt groups so that I can see my paper and I can see you in your stunt groups and make sure that I'm making the right decision? So today was my first practice at TNT. I was excited, but I didn't know anything, so I didn't know if I was taking somebody's spot, if I was going to be an alternate, whatnot, because all I had been told was come to practice after NCA, so that was what I was doing. So I was really excited, but kind of nervous because I didn't know what I was walking into. And I walk in the gym, we run a mile, like the usual, and then we go and sit down, and everyone's like freaking out. And I was like, why are we freaking out? Like, should I be freaking out? And they were like, no, we're just making cuts. And I was like, oh. I know what I gotta do. I just don't like doing it. You make your decisions for a reason. But I have to make them. Yeah. And that's nothing, this is one. TNT have to cut five. Five? Six. Did, did you already cut them yesterday? No. Or are you just coming like Sunday? Sunday. I had to push it to Sunday because I needed more time to figure out who the six are, but that team has way too many kids just standing around doing nothing for no reason. We know that cuts are coming around. Um, Orby's kind of talked about how there might be new people coming to the team, how he wants to make a routine that's going to be the best, uh, best chance at us winning. We know that he has a vision and if we don't execute the vision, he's going to change things. We compete in a week. It's not the type of team that I can just say, okay, a reconstruction of the routine. Like, how long did it take to get here, you know? So I'm really struggling this one. I don't want to make the wrong decision. Last year, I got cut from Reckless, and there was no team to go down to or up to, like, at all. So I had no choice but to sit on the sidelines, and I didn't get to compete at Worlds. And watching Worlds, it was hard, really hard. <laughs> It's just like, I know I worked hard from the summer and then getting cut again from Reckless. I just don't want to lose the opportunity to do this team at Worlds because that would be like my third time. So I really, really want to compete at Worlds this year. All right. Um, uh, I hate life. Tony, this is the end of the road for you, baby. I'm sorry. Alexis, this is the end of the road for you too, baby. I'm sorry. Genevieve, this is the end of the road for you too, baby. I'm sorry. It breaks my heart, guys. Know that I've been struggling this. I technically wanted to drop down to 25, and I don't even have the heart to drop down to 25. Like, I don't have the heart to do it. And my heart drops, like, like that's my sister. Like, and I walked over there, and I, I wanted to cry. Like, it was so, I want to cry right now. I just got to do what I got to do. The truth is, and I'm just being honest right now, Tony's not doing much in the routine right now, so it's an easy pullout. Alexis gives me a partner stunt and a kick double that McKenna can give me, and Genevieve is hurt. She can't give me the flexibility that I need, so McKenna goes in that spot. I knew, like, I just, I gotta be strong for her, like, 
My little sister's crying, like she can't have her big sister crying with her. Were you surprised? I, yeah, I was surprised. Um, I mean, I knew that another flyer coming on the team meant that my chances of staying were going to be lower, but I really want to still try and fight for my spot. I'm really sorry, I feel so bad. I didn't know how to give it to her, like hug her, or tough love, so she just said, I need you, and oh, I just, I wanted to cry, because that was really, really sad, and just like, my sister's never told me she needed me, like, she's always just like, it's fine, it's fine, we're gonna get through this, she's like the one who brings up everyone, so just hearing her tell me she needed me, I knew that, she, oh, it was really sad. It's okay, I promise, it's okay, <laughs> you're gonna get it, you're gonna compete at Worlds, we're gonna compete at Worlds together, okay? I didn't give up, so I don't expect you to. So, get on that floor over there, please, and just go to your opening. I think it's a lot of emotions here because the season started last April, last May for some of these people on the team. Um, and it's, it's kind of hard to see them go. Um, like, he cut my flyer, and I've been working with her with the same stunt group for I don't know, it's been six, seven months now, so cuts don't just affect like, the people that actually get cut, they affect the teammates as well. When I make cuts with those type of kids, they're always harder because those are the positive kids on the floor. Um, but I learned that the hard way the first two years that I coached this team is that you can't really coach with a heart. You just have to coach with what you know is going to be the best on the floor. She stood next to me and she's like, you know what, you're right. Like, I'm going to fight. Like, there's no reason I should be crying when you're still here and this is happening to you twice and you still want to come back. So just hearing her say that she was going to fight just like made me feel better, but just really sad that I still teared up for her. And I didn't want this to happen to her because nobody saw it coming. Well, today is Pyramid Day. We've done a few more upgrades to the pyramid, and that's what I always do little by little. And this is the upgrade of the pyramid. And I think that the routine with these upgrades is good enough to win. I've looked at our competitors. They're all great. I'm not trashing any competitor, but if my team cleans up, it's going to be extremely hard to beat them. By the time that we get to Worlds, this should be already 10 out of 10. Let's go. One, up, two, three, go. Five, seven, toes, one. Go three, arms, five, and seven, soft, one, sharp. And five, up, seven, one. Go three, lift, five, and seven, up on one. Three, up on five, legs, five, lock it hard, and up, hold, and five, seven, thank you, Jesus. And one to music, and then you get a drink, quickly. I'm currently in the real world, of not all-star cheerleading. Uh, there is a virus known as the coronavirus that is going around. There's no cure, it can be lethal. People with weak immune systems like babies and <laughs> elderly. So uh, if you haven't noticed, Levi has not been in the gym for now two months because of flu season and now this virus. Well, here at the gym, we do the best we can to just kind of clean everything after every practice. We've gotten really big on Lysol and just spraying around and wiping down mats. But at the end of the day, you can do as much as you want. It just takes one person to carry a virus to give it to the next. Um, so now seeing all these concerts that are being canceled and all these big events that are being canceled, yeah, that puts that fear in our, in our head about worlds being canceled. It's a serious thing, like people joke about it and like, you know, it's funny to like crack jokes sometimes, but it I actually, you know, it could affect like the United States like spreading here, it affects other countries. It's been like, all right, well guys, well, we might have to cancel worlds because this is going around, like we can't spread it because we're at, we're at Disney World, we're seeing a bunch of people, we're seeing young kids, older people, like middle-aged, teenagers, everyone's at Disney World and you know like you pass by a lot of people and it's, you've, it's very, it, it spreads, it spreads quite easily and some people are asymptomatic, you don't even know they have it. So it's like, it could actually be a real, like a real issue. Like it's really serious and I mean, cheerleading is obviously not as serious as this virus, so if they do cancel, it is obviously for the best. We all don't want to get this virus, but it's kind of like, are we doing this for no reason? Like, we all want to go to Worlds, we all want to win Worlds, we all want to go to this competition, so it's kind of like, what's going to happen? It's crazy to think that, like, we could go through a whole season and, like, work so hard to, like, go to Worlds and win Worlds, and, like, Worlds not even happen. That's so, like, that is actually terrifying to me that, like, 
we worked for like seven, eight months on this routine to take it to Worlds. And the fact that it might be canceled, whew. I might have been practicing all week getting ready for UCA. Um, on Wednesday, I got a call early in the day that um, two of our girls went in to get tested for strep and get medication for the weekend. Um, it's a big weekend, so we wanted all our athletes to feel 100%. And um, because of the symptoms that they were showing, they were asked to test for the uh, coronavirus. So uh, I'm officially quarantined in my house because of the test. They told me I cannot leave at all until I get the test results back. And then UCA has been canceled for us because I can't leave and we can't start the weekend because we don't know what's happening. I'm very scared that it could be that, but also like I've been feeling better since they got me on medicine. So I don't know, it just is different. We decided that for the safety of our kids and our program that we were gonna pull our two teams that from this location that we're attending UCA because heaven forbid that, you know, they were positive and that we would be spreading it or put somebody else at risk. So we decided not to attend UCA. No practice, we're not doing practices. We're waiting until the gym's completely clean and we're waiting on test results and it sucks. Um, this was a lot of our last UCAs and this is some people's first UCAs and it's another big competition that we will not be getting to go to, but. Again, our biggest concern right now is keeping everyone safe and keeping everyone healthy. So before, a couple weeks before NCA, I got the flu and then it started to get better when I got on medicine. And then UCA week, I got pneumonia and then they gave me on more medicine. And then they told me by the end of the week, by the time I left for UCA, I'd be fine. And then we got a checkup. They put us in the car because we couldn't go in there because if we had it, we can't be around people. So picture the girls in the car and the doctor and the nurses coming to the car, rolling down the window, taking their blood pressure through the window, uh, not letting them out of the car, and in hazmat suits, top to bottom, taking the swab of their throats and their nose and sticking it out like a garbage bag. The doctor told her she wasn't going anywhere because she was really sick. And she said, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to Florida tomorrow. There's there's, no, There's way. no way I'm not. And she goes, no, 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 you're not going anywhere. It's very important to take this very serious and do our due diligence to make sure that we're doing our part uh, to ensure the safety of ourselves and others and our kids and our own families. If we just treat it as like, it's fine, you're fine, and then we do have it, then that is really bad. And it's very scary in these times because a lot of people are dying from it and like not doing what they sh they're supposed to and being under quarantine when they have to be so we just gotta wait it out and see what happens we discussed what we're going to be doing during these online practices so that'll be interesting to see how all of this works out and for how long we're going to be doing this oh if you click there's like a little like square with like a whole bunch of other squares right there you click it you i came back from india on a work trip and five days later, I came down with the symptoms. It was after NCA. I was just not ready for that to be my last time. I was going to be in a smudge form. It all happened so fast.